Hey guys, welcome to my channel, and I'm like always, I'm Brian. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install an all-in-one cooler into a Prodigy M, which I like to call Project Firestarter. So stay tuned to see how I install an all-in-one cooler, Chanley style. Alright guys, so the first thing you're going to want to do is have a plan. So take your product, um, kind of guess where everything's going to be. So these fans are going to be down here. The, the cooler itself is going to line up right about here. So account for the fan spacing and just kind of figure out which way everything's going to go. So what I came up with is this is probably going to be the best orientation for the cooler, but you'll see how it's going to look once everything's installed and turned out great. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to uninstall your old cooler. Um, I don't really recommend using the cooler that your processor comes with, but this was just on here for a test. Next thing you're going to want to do is clean up the CPU, which I have a video for, so you go ahead and check that out. I'll put a link to it somewhere around in this general area. While I was installing new th or cleaning off the old thermal paste and installing new thermal paste, or applying new thermal paste for that matter, I went ahead and installed the first fan because, well, really just get it out of the way. But when you install the fan, make sure you have your settings pre-selected to which speed you want, because really once it's on there, it's going to be a pain to change. Next thing we need to do is set up the back plate. So for you uh, AMD guys, and uh, people still using the 775, don't forget about this little bracket popping into place, and you're good to go. It even says right here, this side for Intel, this side for AMD, so don't get it confused. Take the pins, uh, these pins right here, stick it into the middle hole, and go all the way around like that. Once everything's installed properly, it should be flush right here and uh, not move left or right because there's a notch cut out where everything lines up. Now having this giant back plate cut out is where the BitPhoenix Pen Prodigy really comes in handy, uh, the Prodigy M. And like I said, with that back plate, since this one already has it, you don't need to install the one that fits in right here. So I went ahead and installed this fan and ran the cable up here and plugged it into the system fan header just because I feel like once the cooler is installed, it's going to be a pain in the butt to get in there. Next thing I'm going to do is carefully position the cooler into place and I'm going to install the radiator next. Luckily, if you listen, you can hear how the screws pop into place. And don't tighten all the screws at once. Get them kind of seated and then go back in a star shape and tighten them all down until they're snug. Due to some space constraints, I had to remove this fan, but once everything's all installed, I'm pretty sure the fan will go right back in. Next thing we need are these compression springs and the spacers. So go ahead and install the spacers on all the backplate screws. If you look down in there, it looks like they only go on one way, so be careful about that. Don't forget to pull off the film, revealing the beautiful copper plate. Apply pressure to the back of the back plate so that nothing goes anywhere. Followed by the compression screws. Once you get all the compression springs installed, go back through them with a screwdriver and a star pattern and make sure they're good and secured. Evenly tighten them so that the copper plate is flush with the CPU to give it proper cooling. The next step is installing the CPU or the pump onto the CPU cooler. Power management slot. 
And now we can wrap it up, put the fans back together, and put all the components back in. Yay! Alright, so here's the finished project. I went ahead and tucked away all the wires down here and back in here. I didn't realize that there was a blue LED, which is kind of nice. And, um... Overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, even though it was a real pain in the butt. Alright guys, well this video's already gotten a little bit too long, or longer than I wanted it to be, so temps will be down in the description once I've collected them. Temperatures weren't really record-breaking by any standard, but I thought they did a pretty good job. Just starting off at 100% load with, a <clears throat> with an overclock of 4.2 GHz and a voltage of 1.2, the CPU was right around 62-ish on the average, if you look at the different temperature cores, the core temperatures. And that was right when I started Prime 95. I let it run for about a half an hour, just a little bit over actually. And the temps maxed out at 91 degrees Celsius, which wasn't too bad. And the case never went above about 41 degrees Celsius, or at least according to my recon. So I think that it's doing a pretty good job. I would actually like to test it against my old air cooler just to see what happens. So stay tuned because that might actually be a follow-up video or something like that. You know, air versus all-in-one just to give it a good test. As for this, final thoughts, get yourself better hardware. These screws are terrible. Luckily, I had some old hardware sitting around. So back here, I actually used real water cooling hardware because the aluminum screws they gave just stripped and were kind of garbage they, okay they're probably not aluminum they were ferrous enough to stick to my um my screwdriver but really they were just garbage and a little bit too short uh overall i'm happy with this this when this thing kicked on it sounded like a freaking hurricane and then my fan controller took over brought it down to about 1700 rpms and this thing is Pretty much whisper quiet. Like I had to stick my head in there to be able to hear it. I don't know if you guys are picking it up. I don't feel like moving my my microphone. Either way, you could even take this down a few steps more if you really needed it to be even more quiet. Even though this thing was a pain in my ass, I'm really excited about it and it looks really nice. It opened up the the airflow in my in my case and I'm hoping that it'll help keep the GPUs a little bit cooler since more air from the bottom is going to get up towards the top. One of the other things I did is I didn't like the way the PWM plug was white, so I went ahead and I stuck some shrink wrap over it, melted it, uh, melted it down, and I think it really uh, brings together the look. It just doesn't have like a big white plug sticking out at the bottom of the case. Really, other than that, there's not much else to say. This like a, it's an extra thick radiator, so hopefully it'll be able to disperse all the heat coming off this Devil's Canyon. Um, and like I said, the temperatures will be down in the bottom. <sighs> Thanks for watching my video, guys. Don't forget to like it. Leave your comments down below. Like my Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Twitch. And this was installing an all-in-one cooler, Chanley style.